Are you ready to unlock the power of data with Power BI? In this video, we'll guide you through the simple steps to install and use Power BI Desktop, Microsoft's powerful tool for creating interactive reports and dashboards. Whether you're a beginner or looking to enhance your data skills, this video will help you get started quickly. Let's dive in. So before we begin, make sure to like, share and subscribe. Do not forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest tech content from Edureka's YouTube channel. And also check out Edureka's Microsoft Power BI Certification Training by PwC Academy, the link to which is given in the description box below. Let's see the agenda for today's video. First, we will learn the evolution of Power BI. Then, what is Power BI? Moving on to, what is Power BI Desktop? Why is Power BI Desktop used? We will also see how to install Power BI Desktop. Then, how to use Power BI Desktop. Lastly, how to publish Power BI report also. Let's examine what the companies were doing before Power BI came into picture. Traditionally, data visualization and business intelligence were complex processes that frequently required specialized technical skills. Basic data analysis was performed using tools such as Excel, but organizations had to rely on custom-built solutions or expensive proprietary software for more sophisticated reporting and analytics. Now, we will see the challenges that they faced. The solutions were frequently time-consuming to implement and maintain, and they needed more flexibility and scalability to keep pace with changing business needs. Now let's see what are the advantages after Power BI came into picture. The solution bought by Power BI was, first, the real-time data integration. Power BI seamlessly integrates with various data sources, enabling real-time data streaming and eliminating manual processing. Next is automating reports and dashboards. Automatically refreshes reports and dashboards, allowing quick creation of visualization without technical expertise. Next is a self-service BI. Empowers business users to create, custom and explore reports independently, reducing reliance on IT teams. Interactive visualization. Provides fully interactive dashboards with advanced analytics such as forecasting and clustering. Scalability and cloud-based accessibility. Offers cloud-based scalability enabling remote access and collaboration from any device. Last is the cost effectiveness. Provides flexible pricing, reducing hardware investments and making BI accessible to businesses for all sizes. Hope you now have a clear understanding of what changes were brought into companies after Power BI. Now let's see what is Power BI. Microsoft created Power BI, a platform of data visualization and business intelligence. Its primary goal is to assist users in gathering, analyzing and visualizing data to access the effectiveness of marketing activities and make decisions about the next steps. This tool converts raw data from various sources such as databases, spreadsheets, cloud services, apps and CSV files into interactive reports and dashboards. These reports enable businesses to handle complex information by presenting data intelligibly. Now let's also learn what is Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is a free application for your local computer that allows you to connect to, transform and visualize data. It enables you to connect to multiple data sources and combine them into a data model. This data model allows you to create visuals and collections of visuals that can be shared as reports with others within your organization. Most users who work on business intelligence projects develop reports in Power BI Desktop and then share them with others through the Power BI service. Have you all ever imagined why is Power BI Desktop used? Power BI Desktop simplifies the process of connecting, transforming and visualizing data for better decision making. It allows users to pull data from multiple sources, databases, cloud services, Excel and more. And then clean, combine and model that data within a single environment. Power BI's desktop drag and drop interface enables users to create interactive reports and dashboards without requiring deep technical skills, making it ideal for both data analysts and business users. Now let's learn how to install Power BI in our desktop. Now go to your search bar, type Microsoft Store. On your Microsoft Store, let's search for Power BI Desktop. Now to install, let's click on Get. Now let's open the Power BI Desktop by clicking on the Open option. As you can see that the Power BI Desktop is open, click on Blank Report. And now this is the home screen of the Power BI Desktop. 
In the home tab, we have get data. Under get data, we have common data sources where we can source a file in Excel workbook or in Power BI semantic models or it can be text or CSV file too. We have transformed data that is also known as the query editor. Power Query Editor is a powerful tool for shaping and transforming data. With Power Query Editor, you can make changes to your data such as changing a data type, removing columns or combining data from multiple sources. So under insert, we have new visuals, text box and more visuals. New visuals is nothing but you can create or add any visuals that is needed. Text box is that you can add any of the text that is needed in the report. Now, on the left hand side of the Power BI desktop screen, you can see a report view. Report view is that which allows you to create any number of report pages with visualizations. You can move visualizations around, copy and paste and even merge and so on. Next is a table view. The table view in Power BI displays data in rows and columns, allowing sorting, filtering, conditional formatting and detailed analysis too. Next comes the model view. Model view is that which shows all the tables, columns and relationships in your model. It is applicable when your model has complex relationships between many tables. The DAX query view in the Power BI is a query language used for custom calculations. It creates measures, calculated columns and supports time-based functions, allowing dynamic data analysis and transformation. Now I will teach you how to source a data. Go to Get Data. Under Common Data Sources, we have Text and CSV. I am selecting Text and CSV because my file format is in Text and CSV. So here under Downloads, so I have two files that is Sales and the other one is Details. Let's select it one by one. So I'm clicking on sales and opening the file. So here we have load and transform data. As mentioned before, transform data is nothing but you can edit the data as well. I will be showing you how to transform data in this video further. So now let's load the data by clicking load option. Now let's source the other file as well. That is the details. Similarly, click on load. Now to check whether our files have been loaded or no. Towards the right hand side of the screen, we have data. Under that, we can see the files that we have extracted. Now to check the data in each file, click on table view. Here, clicking on details, you can see the details consist of many columns like order ID, amount, profit and so on and even we have the datas under it. Similarly, in sales, we have columns like ID, age, sales made and so on and even the datas are provided under it. Now let's see how to transform the data. Click on transform data, transform data, so it will take you to the Power Query Editor. Now in Power Query Editor, you can enter data, choose columns, remove columns, keep rows and even remove rows. This is similar as the Excel, but in Excel, you can only extract minimum number of datas. But in Power BI, you can extract huge number of datas. Now, right click on the ID column. We can see many options like remove column, duplicate column. We can also see the change type. Change type means the values type. So my values are in whole numbers. You can also change the values to decimal numbers, fixed decimal numbers, percentage, date and so on. To duplicate a column, right click on the ID column and select duplicate column. You'll notice that the duplicated column appears on the screen and is automatically named as ID copy to reflect the duplication. On the right hand side in the applied steps pane, you can track the actions taken. To remove the duplicated column, simply click on the small x next to the corresponding step. After clicking, the duplicated column is removed and deleted from the data. Now let's see how to add a new column. First go to add column tab. Now let's select the data from the details file and select the custom column under the add column tab. There is a box for the new column's name. By default, a name is provided as custom, but you can change it to something you prefer. Let's call it result. Next, we need to create a formula. In this case, we'll multiply amount by quantity. Once the formula is entered, click on OK. After clicking, you will see the result column added displaying the values from multiplying amount and quantity. Now, let's go to the Home tab. In Home tab, we have Close and Apply. Under that, we have options like Close, which allows you to close a Power Query Editor 
and apply which allows you to apply the changes in the data. Now by clicking on close and apply option, it will apply the changes that we have made and even close up our query editor. Now I hope you have understood how transform data works. Now let's move ahead and create visuals. Before creating the visual, let's choose text box to give the name for the report. So here I'll be giving it as sales dashboard. Let's change the font size and let's give the font size as 20 and make it bold and let's align it. Now that our title is created, let's choose a graph that is tag column chart. Let's just align the graph. Now let's give the values for the graph. So for the x-axis, I'll be taking the result by dragging and dropping it from the data. And for the y-axis, let's give the subcategory as the y-axis value from the data. Now let's align the graph. Now let's change the color of the report. For that, go to format your report page. Under that, we have canvas background. Go to colors. Choose the preferable color. But I have downloaded an image, the color which I needed. So browse. You can increase or decrease the transparency, but I'll be decreasing the transparency to make my background very darker. So I'll be making it into 9%. So here you can see that the color of the report is seen. Now let's make the changes for the chart. For that, go to visual. In x-axis, we have values and color. So let's change the color of the values of the x-axis to white. Similarly, in y-axis, we have values. In colors, let's change the color of the y-axis values to white. As the color of the values are not visible, let's change the background color of the chart as well. For that, go to general. Under general, we have FX. In FX, we have background. So let's increase the transparency so that it pairs with the background color of the report. So here you can see that our values are visible. Now let's remove the text from the x-axis and y-axis by keeping only the values. For that, we need to go to visual. Under x-axis, we have title, so let's off the title. So here you can see that the text of the x-axis is invisible or it is removed. Similarly, under y-axis, let's off the title. Now even the y-axis title is removed. As my title for the graph is given as count of subcategory by result, let's rename the title as well. For that, go to general. Under title, let's change the text of the title to subcategory by result. Let's also change the color of the text to white. Let's make it bold and let's align the text to center. Now you can see that the graph is created perfectly. Let's just align the graph. As you can see that the grid lines are visible on the graph, let's remove that as well. For that, go to visuals. Under grid lines, let's off the grid line. So now you can see that the grid lines have been removed. Now let's add the border for our chart. For that, go to general. Under general, we have FX. In FX, we have visual borders. Let's on the visual borders and give the color for the border. You can give it according to your preference as well. I'll be giving it as white and increasing the rounded corners to 9 pixel. And let's increase the width as well. I'll be giving it to 2 pixel. So now you can see that the border is created. Now let's create another graph. For that, let's take the clustered bar chart and let's add values to it. So for the y-axis, I'll be adding the category value by dragging and dropping it from this data. And for the x-axis, I'll be taking the value profit. As you can see that a graph is created. Now, Remember that you do not need to make changes for each chart. Just click on the previous chart, click on Format Painter option and just apply to the chart which you need to change. Now you can see that the Sum of Profit by Category chart is created. Now I will show you how to change the color of the bars. For that, go to Visuals, go to Bars. Under that, we have Colors. I'll be changing the color to pink. So now you can see that the color is applied. This is how you change the color for the bars. Now you can see that a graph is created. Now let's create another graph by selecting the pie chart. Let's give values for the pie chart. For the legend, let's give payment mode. And for the values, let's give profit. So as you can see that a graph is created. Similarly, let's give the changes for the graph. 
by clicking on the format painter and selecting the pie chart. So now you can see that our graph is created and the background color and all the changes have been done. Now as you can see that our values are not visible, let's change the color of the values. For that go to visual. Under visual we have detail label. In detail label we can see values. Let's change the color for the values. So I'll be giving it in white. Now let's also change the label content for the values. So moving to options. My label content is in data and percentage. So let's only give it in percentage. So I'll be selecting category of percentage. So now you can see that my values have been changed to percentage. So there are some values on the right hand side of the graph. So I'll just remove all of those. For that let's go to legend. Under visual let's off the legend. So here you can see that those values have been removed. In case you need to change the color of the pie chart, you can go to slices. Under colors, you can change or you can add any preferable color you need to for your pie chart. So I'll be not doing any changes because I do not need any changes in my pie chart. As my color of the title is also not changed, let's change the color of the title by clicking on the previous graph and giving the option as format painter. So here you can see that my title's background color is also changed. Let's also change the font color. So I'll be giving it as in white. So now that my title is visible, let's align it. So I hope you have understood how to create visuals in Power BI Desktop. So after the dashboard is created, let's make sure that a dashboard is saved. For that, go to file, click on save and give the file name. So I'll be giving here it as sales dashboard and click on save. So now my dashboard is saved. I also want to share and collaborate with my colleagues on this. So I need to publish this report up to the power service. So let's click on publish. Here it will ask you for the email address. So if you're privately doing it, you can give your private address or if you're working professionally, you can give your office email address as well. So after you give the email ID, click on publish. And here I choose the workspace destination as workspace and publish it. And when I open my report in the Power BI service, in the Power BI service home screen, I can see my sales dashboard visible here. Click on it. So here you can see my sales dashboard. I can also see what my report readers will see and also can interact with my report. Power BI Desktop is a powerful tool for businesses. It offers an easy way to connect, analyze and visualize data. Its intuitive features allow users to create interactive reports and dashboards, enhancing decision making across the organization. With that, we have come to an end of this Power BI desktop video. If you have enjoyed it, please be kind enough to like it and you can comment on any doubts and queries. We will reply to them as soon as possible. Do look up for more videos and playlists and subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel to learn more. Thank you for watching and happy learning.